So Leslie and Jorge uh, started the Rescue Ranch about 11 years ago. So Jorge's Costa Rican. Leslie grew up here. Um, and then her family, when she was a teenager, her family moved, well, a few places, but eventually back to the U.S. Um, and then as an adult, she came here on vacation. And her first night here, she just said she felt like this was home. She wanted to move back. She wanted to get a bird. Um, so she went back to the U.S. and she went to a pet shop and bought what she says is a horrible bird. Um, horrible because very aggressively biting. Um, and 20 years later, we still have that bird and he still likes to bite. I give him treats on the weekend and he tries to bite me every time. Um, so she, got, she went and got a nicer bird, a softer personality bird. And then she joined a bird club. And when she did that, um, people started giving her birds. Um, you know, a lot of people will um, get an exotic pet thinking, oh, this will be fun, and it's a lot more work than they think it's going to be. And so they'd be wanting to give them up. So she went back, and then when she had gotten up to, I forget exactly how many birds, but a number of birds, and her 40th birthday, she went... Um, to spend a month in Peru researching macaws and learning about macaws and research programs. And she volunteered there, and while she was there, the scientist told her about the macaw project here, and she applied for that job. There was the people running it needed some help. She applied, got the job, went back to the U.S., told everyone she's moving, and then it took her a year to get all the permits to get her birds out of the U.S. and into Costa Rica. You know, and it has to be it, people that love the animals um, and are dedicated because this is not a job. It's It impacts their whole lives. You know, that's their home up there. It's part of their everyday lives. There isn't go to work and then take a couple days off. And she started as the Toucan Rescue Ranch because there were a number of projects for macaws, but nothing for the toucans. So if an injured toucan came in, no one really wanted it. It was kind of just stuck somewhere because it wasn't a macaw, which is what people were focusing on for the most part. Um, we started with toucans and, of course, other birds. Over time, we added owls. Um, and then eventually we got a sloth, which I'll tell you about how we started with the sloths as we go around. Um, and once we took a sloth and had an animal, from the nice point of view, we took animals, so that's how we ended up with a lot of other things, a lot of variety of things. Anything that comes in as a teenager or adult and has minor injuries, we give medical care and release back out. Um, so we've had um, numerous birds, and I think it's about eight sloths that have come in, gotten care, and then been released back out. When something comes in as a baby or with a serious injury, those are the ones that probably can't be released. When they come as, as babies, birds or animals, they end up having to have too much human interaction and they get what we say imprinted on humans. Um, so when they get hungry, they go looking for a person. They don't know the predators, you know, their, their behavior isn't their normal behavior and they won't survive in the wild. So when they come in as babies, it's really difficult to release them. So um, most of our birds and animals come from either the illegal trade, uh, accidents, getting hit by a car, running into a barbed wire fence, or from loss of habitat, cutting a tree down or um, building on the river where there's a nest, that sort of thing. So what is illegal trade? What is it? It, it is illegal to, um, in Costa Rica, it's illegal for anyone to own wildlife. Uh, the only places that should have wildlife are places like ourselves that are registered with Manai. So we have to follow Manai regulations. All the birds and animals come from Manai. So you can see, especially side by side, how different two toads and three toads are. Um, besides the fur looking different, she has really short legs and really long arms. And she has a little tail there. So a three toed sloth only eats leaves. No insects, no vegetables, anything else. Just seed pods and leaves. 
Um, so she uses that tail to balance on a branch and then those long arms to harvest those leaves. And you can see they always look like they're smiling and have a mask on their, their face and that beetle's haircut. You also <laughs> notice her being more upright and she can actually look behind her like an owl because she has nine vertebrae, so she has two more than us. So um, she'll do that upright. Just like a two-toed, she's really strong. She can twist in any direction. She's all bone, muscle, and fur. Okay, Issy. And she's named Issy for Ishidora, the scientist that discovered spider monkeys in Costa Rica. And she's doing this because we're friends, so we can groom each other. If I put my head there, she'll do the same thing. But she likes to pull hair. Don't you kiss it? Don't you kiss it? Yes. Yes. And even though we're friends, it's up to me to make sure I don't get close enough for her to bite. Um, you know, animals can do things to each other that don't hurt, but would hurt us. So it's up to me to make sure I don't let my hand get tight and uh, close enough in there. For her to bite. I'm always careful when she's turning around. Yes, Issy. Yes, Issy. Thank mm -hmm. you.